This is London, a vibrant city of almost 8 million and where Jasman Jafar has been based for the past four years. Having earned his international sea license when he was just 14 years old, a year younger than the industry standard, Jasman has taken his racing career up a notch with his entry into the British Formula 3 driving for Carlin Motorsport, finishing 12th in his rookie season and 6th in 2011. We'll be spending the day with the Petronas Talent Development nominee right here in the city, where we get to see firsthand what his daily routine is all about. Hey guys, it's me, Jasmine. Got a whole day planned out for us. Starting my day early, the weather looks great. 8 a.m. start and uh, off for a bike ride. Come and join me. Jasmine recently entered a triathlon, where cycling, running and swimming are the three disciplines that need to be completed. He mentioned that swimming in the cold waters has got to be the toughest thing he's ever done. Right, I'm going to call it a day with cycling. Let's head to the gym. Hi guys, we're now here at Pro Performance where they do uh, specific training for racing drivers. For example, the neck machine, circuit training, bathtub reaction wall and many, many more. So come and join me here at the gym and I'll show you a couple of bits that I do. Hi, morning Dan. Hi Jess, how are you? So what's the plan today? We do a lot of sport specific training so we get started on the bike and get you warmed up. Let's get going. This facility has developed a unique training area specifically for racing drivers. We had Pro Performance's Dan Williams speak to us about what Jasmine's training is all about. Pro Performance is a sports science consultancy with the sole aim of improving um, athletic performance through elements of sports science, so through physiology, nutrition and sports psychology. Um, the majority of our work is based in motor racing, but we do do work in uh, golf and uh, boxing as well. With Jazzman, he comes in on a regular basis once a week and has sports specific training. So we do things like um, reaction time, neck strength work, specific muscle group training with um, weights, etc and also some elements of boxing to really focus on high skills in terms of the cardiovascular fitness. Hi guys, that was a good workout. Time to get the showers and grab some lunch. All right, Dan, thank you so okay, much for today. All right. See you later. Uh, before you go, there's a question here from a member of the public. All right. Yeah, just got some questions for you. Hi, Jasmine, my name is Effie, and my question for you today is, um, being a professional at such a young age, do you feel like you've missed out on your teenage life? Well, not at all actually. Um, I have to have a good balance between my uh, social life and as well as work. So um, I'm actually off to see my friends in a bit. So friends are very important to me. Hi guys, that was a good lunch. Off to Brackley we go to catch up with Michael Schumacher. Someone once said that Michael Schumacher is the reason everyone watches Formula One races. Those who want to see him win, and those who want to see him beaten. Either way, Schumacher has fascinated millions of F1 followers and become the benchmark to measure other drivers against. We were privileged to have the racing maestro right here on the show. Hello everyone, we're here today at the Mercedes AMG Petronas gym with Michael Schumacher, the most successful driver in Formula One. Tell us about your season this year. Well, a little bit mixed, I would say, though uh, with uh, a couple of uh, smaller highlights in terms of uh, fighting on track, uh, mm -hmm. such as in Spa coming from the last going yep. forward, and, That's right. and Monza straight after after that was uh, pretty exciting. But other than that, uh, certainly below expectation. So, what's the uh, what's the goal for yourself and the team in the future? What do you see yourself in the, in the next couple of years? Well, if we look around and we look at the level of gym that we have available for all our employees, uh, that is absolutely state of the art. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if we could match the car for it, then uh, we, we're going to run up front. Yeah, yeah. So I'm this sure. is the big challenge for us uh, for next year, to make a car that uh, sort of moves us further forward. Difficult to expect to go right away to the number one position, but if we can be in touch at least to the front top, uh, top three runners, that would be ideal. At this age, have you ever thought like um, you weren't physically strong enough to do it, or have you? Were you worried about the young drivers, like some of them being quicker? Did you put pressure on yourself to push a bit more? How did you gauge yourself with preparing all of that? 
The only worry in terms of not being strong enough uh, was mainly for my neck. How, how hard can I work out my neck because of the injury that I have? Uh, in a way, um, this was the open question mark, but with enough time, my doctor at the time told mm -hmm. me it should be okay yeah. and it will work out. But still, until the day of proof, uh, you sort of uh, think of this. And then naturally, being off for three years, yeah. uh, to get back into the rhythm, into the habit, learn a new team, mm -hmm. learn the new style of cars, uh, all those ones uh, put you some smaller question marks mm -hmm. on top of your mind. Uh, that knowing what I was doing in the meantime, running motorbikes, running still mm -hmm. the go-karts, yeah. uh, doing all sorts of uh, events, I still knew that, that uh, in terms of talent, it should work out. Mm -hmm. But uh, the adaptation, how long will it take? Uh, that's certainly something I thought very intensely about. Mm. Can you share with us what is your training regime? How do you prepare yourself before a race or after the race? Well, quite a few uh, machines you would obviously uh, see in here. And uh, to start with would be the cardiovascular. Okay. I, if I happen to, to have bad weather at home, then naturally I go in the gym. And it's the stair... Uh, Stairmaster, yes. you call it, yeah. um, and uh, how, you call, how you call the uh, the one that you use hand and, and legs? Um, cross trainer. Cross trainer, yeah. That's right. Excuse me, actually cross trainer. Cross trainer. Yeah. The cross trainer because it does an immediate uh, effect for legs and mm. arms. Okay. It's not one particular uh, area that needs to be physically strong. That is purely uh, cardiovascular. Okay. Then afterwards you have your rounds of uh, some weights and uh, weights in combination with balance exercise mm -hmm. it's not the pure strength it's the balance and the coordination yeah, okay, that, yeah. that you sort of work out for and after this one uh, doing the sort of top of body okay you then jump into the neck machine okay and i work out for at least an hour uh, wow. just the neck wow so do you do uh, much outdoor training what about cycling or any mixtures of, of, of any of that Obviously, once I'm not in the gym, that is the next uh, point. Okay. And cycling is uh, on the agenda. Okay. Running is not, yet, not on the agenda. I have too many issues with my knees, but okay. already, since I was 14, right. I had problems uh, with this. I learned the new uh, exercise, and that is uh, rollerblades mm -hmm. with the co uh, cross-country sticks. Oh, okay. So it's like uh, going cross-country skiing, skiing on rollerblades. Yeah, 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 going up yeah. And that is very efficient training. Okay. To do this up the mountains for two hours, uh, you know that you have done a good job. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. So, um, 20 years of Formula One, which era is your favorite era? Was it in the 90s or your Ferrari career or is it now? Which is your. No, certainly the time that, that we had available um, a lot more technic or electronical freedom, including active suspension. Yeah. Uh, traction control, having the tyres that, that we had uh, to the end of, of slicks days or to the end of groove mm -hmm. tyres days, those were the days that, that they were the most exciting and they made the car with, uh, without a lot of compromise and you were able to adapt to your personal style. Mm -hmm. That is uh, quite an important bit because everybody has, a, uh, has his own style mm -hmm. and to maximise your potential together with the car, that is the secret. I see, right. So, um, as a young driver like myself, going up the ladder, what is the best advice you could give for me? Well, I mean, first of all, it is the, the understanding of... Uh, there's a lot of young talents out there, and all of them have uh, a fantastic uh, ability to, to run uh, quick. But the difference, in the end of the day, is going to be those ones, they understand how can I be quicker, mm -hmm. what I have to do extra to be better than the others and learn from all what the others are doing okay. and then put your extra uh, eye dot on yourself. Uh, after this one it is practice and getting into the routine, working yeah. with the engineers and, and just uh, trying to, to see your, your, your way of, of success as a puzzle mm -hmm. that has lots of little pieces yeah. and yeah. you just have to put them step by step together. Right, so mostly self-motivation, pushing yourself. Quite a bit is this too, mm -hmm. because you said self-motivation. Yeah. Certainly this is one of the key factors, but don't underestimate how important it is to motivate your team around. Mm -hmm. Because you be a team to succeed, you can't do that alone. And all the guys that are around you are motivated, they just uh, give a lot more uh, from themselves yeah. and, and that can make the difference again. Yeah, for sure. 
I mean, Michael, you are undoubtedly the most successful driver in Formula One. How did you like the people to remember you? Like, as a person yourself or as a racing driver? No, I have no particular wish about how people want to see me. I know that people who don't know me personally um, have a point of view on myself. People who meet me personally for private occasions, they uh, sort of get a different uh, view on myself that, that uh, probably is a little bit more human and sympathetic because mm -hmm. in television I appear obviously very focused and, mm -hmm. and very straightforward and uh, sometimes uh, very rough mm -hmm. uh, against my opponents. But that's part of the business, but it doesn't mean that I'm in private. Like this. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. I mean, they don't show who you really are on cameras. But to be recognized or remembered, I leave that open to anybody uh, who wants to do that his own way. Good. All right, Michael, should we spend some time in the gym? Why not? <laughs> you ready for it? Let's go. Good. For the first time ever on our show, we have Michael Schumacher giving some fitness tips on how the seven-time world champion keeps himself in racing condition. Jasmine Jaffa is one lucky guy. Too quick. Stay okay. Go up and stay and keep it. All right. Very tough, but very efficient. And then you sort of... And again, not quick. Mm -hmm. Good fun, Michael. You taught me a lot with balance and uh, core strength, which I think it is very important to be in an in, in, in F1 car with you. So, thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm off to get the next train back to London. I hope you guys had a great time with me. See you guys soon.